Many will be coming from places that have outbreaks of COVID-19, like Spain, and there are still regularly scheduled flights coming into Canada from all over the United States. Today, the government toughened its approach to all those returning travelers. It is now mandatory under the Quarantine Act to stay home and self-isolate for 14 days. So there is perfect clarity around the need to isolate when Canadians come back from abroad, whether it's from the USA or other international destinations. We are implementing the Quarantine Act so there is no confusion about the need to do so, whether you are symptomatic or not. Returning travellers with symptoms are warned not to take public transportation and not to self-isolate where there are vulnerable people. When they land, we're told contact information will be taken from symptomatic passengers and others, plus some random checks will be performed. But other than that, it's not clear how the Quarantine Act will be enforced. Mike Drolet reports. Canadians returning from abroad expected extensive testing for COVID-19 symptoms upon landing. When we heard uh, Prime Minister Trudeau speak, we were almost thinking they're going to have like thermal imaging to see if you have a fever or they're going to take your temperature or something at the airports, but none of that. There is nothing. Over the past week, Canadians have been given this single information sheet. A number of travellers interviewed by Global News report the same things. Few masks, fewer questions and almost no social distancing. Well, you know what it is? It's a flying Petri dish and the airports are breeding, very fertile breeding ground for COVID-19. Colette McCaskill and her family went That's into amazing. isolation, but not everyone has heeded the advice of health officials. So now the federal government says it will use the Quarantine Act to force travelers to isolate. The penalties for contravening the order include a million dollar fine and three years in jail. I think all of us are going to be and feel safer with mandatory quarantine for anyone entering Canada. But how will the Quarantine Act be enforced and will Canadians respect it? We've spoken to several travellers who say they'd do anything to return to Canada, including masking any symptoms they may have. Over a million people were screened for fevers at airports during the SARS crisis with no positive tests. And Canada Border Services is investigating how a 72-year-old woman with COVID symptoms was able to fly undetected into Toronto last weekend, only to die hours later. At this stage, with crisis and the stress and, and everybody wanting to get home, we cannot rely on that honour system. I hate to say it, we're human. And humans sometimes need motivation to do the right thing. Mike Drolet, Global News, Toronto. Before this pandemic, Alberta's energy sector was already under the weather, hit by falling oil prices and a lack of pipeline capacity. Today, Canada's finance minister said financial help is coming for the oil and gas industry. I'm not talking about weeks, I'm talking about uh, hours, potentially days, that we can ensure that there's credit facilities for especially the, the small uh, and medium-sized uh, firms in that sector. Right now, the fate of multiple projects in Alberta is uncertain. As Heather Urich's West reports, Alberta's premier says the economic hit will be massive. Chris Mighton has been through downturns in the energy sector before. The bust of 2015 almost cost him everything. Barely back on his feet, last week he was laid off once again. I was uh, notified by phone from my, my direct report that uh, we won't be returning because of the COVID-19. Collectively, companies like Husky, Synovus and Canadian Natural Resources have cut billions in spending following a collapse in oil prices unlike the industry has ever seen. Previous crashes have been serious for the oil and gas industry, but what we're seeing here is unprecedented. We just don't know what's going to be happening. In the mid-80s, Alberta's economy went into recession when the price of West Texas Intermediate hovered just above $11 a barrel, or about $24 in today's terms. 30 years later, in 2015, global oil prices tanked again. Tens of thousands of jobs were lost when prices for a barrel of Western Canada Select fell to around $16 a barrel. At one point last week, that same barrel cost a little more than $5. It's like the same price as a cup of coffee. It's, it's, it's incredible. While COVID-19 has sent global demand for oil off a cliff, a spat between Saudi Arabia's OPEC and Russia has also led to the market being oversupplied. Alberta's premier warns these record low prices could get worse. Citibank is projecting that Brent oil could be trading on average as low as $5 in the second quarter of this year, which, which would probably mean that we would be paying people to take 
uh, Alberta oil off our hands. The federal government says help is coming. Details of a $15 billion aid package are expected to be released this week. While the Alberta government has enlisted the help of former Prime Minister Stephen Harper to help them navigate these uncharted waters. Chris Mighton hopes people like him are not forgotten. As an independent contractor, he isn't even eligible for EI. Just the financial support. Being a contractor is tough. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. Jeff will continue to consult with experts and try to answer your questions. Send them to yourquestions at globalnews.ca. And on our website, you'll find a special page dedicated entirely to COVID-19. That's at globalnews.ca slash coronavirus.